Join us for a driving review of the Tesla Model S with the Raven update. Let's go! In the front you can see this closed grille design, of course electric vehicle doesn't need so much cooling right there. Sleek and elegant lines, not too much playing around. And here the daytime running light, they are right there. The length is at 4 meters 98, 16 foot 3 or 196 inches. Midnight silver is the color for today. But we can also have some more colors, but overall their choices are somewhat limited. But I think that's also good for the customer because it doesn't take much time to configure any Tesla. That's actually helpful, I think. 19 inch wheels or 21 inch wheels. These are the silver 19 inch wheels and you can alternatively get the 21 inch in black. But here I think a more elegant styling than with the silver wheels. And when you go for the smaller wheels, it's also more comfort. Talking about comfort, the Raven update has brought new air suspension upgrades, so the air suspension is now more comfortable than before. We'll find out more while driving. The rear design is somewhat timeless. You can also see that the wing lip is, so to speak, seamlessly formed right here, and also with the tail lamps still look modern. It says dual motor because we have one motor in the front, one in the rear. The front motor has been replaced with a more efficient one that was taken from the Model 3 from the rear there. So that's why even more efficient now and also overall better power update here with the Raven model. That's also why it's called Raven because this electric motor is called Raven that was developed in the Model 3. As for the performance figures here with the long range plus model 3.8 seconds to 1 kilometers an hour or 3.7 seconds to 60 miles an hour and just the performance model then that's also available is about 1.3 seconds faster battery however both the same for long range plus and the performance model 100 kilowatt hours gross or 98 kilowatt hours net and this will deliver some great range figures especially now with this efficiency upgrade and the charging flaps right here hold the rear of the key and then it also opens like this and 11.5 kilowatt AC charging or at the supercharger up to 250 kilowatt DC and maximum range of 650 kilometers or 400 miles when you drive slowly or we test more autobahn speeds and then you can at least still score some 300 miles or some 490 kilometers. Inside of the doors, all covered with leatherette, good build quality. And then here, the inside, also leatherette seats. So the seats all animal free at Tesla in every single Tesla model in black, white, or beige. These stylings are available today. The black one and is a very clean cockpit setup. That's the cool thing for sure. And here, with the matte bright wood today. Just the beige interior would have even brighter wood. Getting inside, nice and easy entry. The Model X as SUV has the advantage that it has a more upright seating position, where here the Model S more has this lower seating position. Interior overview, clean and impressive, straight lines, high-grade leather red use. Not yet for the steering wheel, it has a heating function. And for the Model S and for the X, it is animal skin, whereas the Model 3 and the Model Y is already also leather red at the steering wheel, so it's the only animal part remaining in this interior here at the steering wheel. But they also want to change it for the future. But here you can also see high grade leather red, leather red, and everything feels very nicely. And the build quality has been constantly upgraded as well. Mostly buttonless steering wheel, just with a few controls. So more details to that. 17 inch screen, vertical way is still really impressive. Yeah, in the digital instruments, very clear and easy, everything to read, to speed. The left side, for example, what the music is playing at the moment, left lower part for the range. Right side then for the energy consumption. Yeah, you can see also how it plays a role if here I drive rather slowly and can be super efficient. 
like 12 kilowatt hours and one kilometers or here if there's more motorway involved 23 kilowatt hours and one kilometers and then of course there's the average and um, i can also easily put that and that's also a cool thing about that, the system to the miles figures and then you can see here again here about 35 kilowatt hours and 100 miles as for the higher motorway consumption and also here on the right side when i use my right thumb i can go through last calls i can just set the temperature easily, for example, or I can set the fan speed, recent calls, and so on, this recall. Really cool. And also with the voice control, activate steering wheel heating. So that's straightforward, works very well. It's really tough to fit this vertical screen in the 16 to 9 camera. This is here the satellite view, of course, really impressive and also quite fast if you compare it to other brands for example then the driving selection here this is probably most important you can switch the acceleration modes we will talk about that how that differs actually also the steering mode how much resistance you want in the steering and so on and um, display choice for example also with the, with the brightness and so on or just the auto brightness so you can control so many interesting things here air suspension has received an update but you can also put it more to comfort or sport depending on your liking so many things you can really individualize right here but the most things will just be fine if you leave them as they are from works and then do some stuff with voice control what you want to change for example so not that important then after all in the lower area you can change the temperature lower console here again with a nice matte wood and you can slide it open and then here you now you have the cup holders you can also adjust them but that's i think a good setup for two big bulbs for example and then just behind it is then the inductive charging pad for your phone getting in the rear and it's a full-size sedan um, you sit relatively low here also and you can see here the angle of my legs not ideal so the bench could be formed a little bit differently that you know there's not too much space right here so it's not the most comfortable ideal situation for tall L's in the rear legroom is however no problem but again I think the whole bench could be yeah maybe a little bit longer and higher for example opening in the trunk for example it works like this double click here on the key and then you can open it and you can source your charging cables right there either in the front or in the rear but that's possible here for example you know for the normal ac stations when you're not at the supercharger or and also here with the household plug and so on but definitely practical to have that here trunk area 28 cubic feet or 804 liters here this cover you can also easily remove that of course then the standard length here would be one, one meter 15 and this is a meter now and that's here in in width right here so very well to use you can see here a cabin trolley also fits easily in, in a vertical way welcome to thomas's driving lounge tesla model s long range plus still we put it to the standard acceleration mode so they have a little bit more acceleration so and we show you acceleration because even this one being not the performance model already this one has so much torque and speed and we will wait until we can safe, safely pass onto the motorway because as soon as i hit this accelerator pedal everyone else will go nuts as do we 20 kilometers an hour let's go That's 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour. Really impressive. Wow. <laughs> that went so quick. So impressive once again. Of course, when you have the performance model in the ludicrous mode, it's absolutely insane. But this one is already so fast. You do not need the performance model to perform a harsh acceleration. This one is way more than enough. And that's also the reason I usually, even here in the non-performance model, put it to the chill acceleration mode because it's just too much for your body to take and you don't have like the, you know, sound resonance. You know, you don't exactly cope with what's happening, you know, so it's just too fast. And if you then think about the upcoming plat model, which is like, two, like 2.1 or 
seconds or two seconds and for the miles to 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour this will be out of this world definitely but here already what a strong acceleration and what you also heard i mean we were going 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour and sound insulation wise it was totally fine and this is the thing about the raven update we already experienced at the model x here one advantage for the model s the model s is even more silent at higher speeds because of the building style somehow you know the model x just higher and this is a really really cool thing so the raven update massively improved the noise insulation at high speeds so far we could always say yeah, you know, Tesla has a great concept and they do this good and this better and this better. But however, the Germans, yeah, more suspension comfort. They're way more silent and high motorway speeds. This is diminishing now bit by bit. So before I was really saying, like, okay, long term driving a Tesla Model S or X with like 140 kilometers on the motorway, 150 kilometers on the motorway, you know, like 80, 90 miles an hour. Yeah, not that pleasant, or I'll take a Mercedes E-Class for that or so. And now I have to say, no problem, you know, at any time. I would also take this one here for higher motorway speeds now. It's actually no problem. Just with the energy, energy consumption, you know, there's the officially range, an official range here for this one, like 650 kilometers or 400 miles. And you can reach that if you have predominantly slow driving and city driving. However, if you consider standard motorway speeds and keep it at cruise control, it's more, once again, about 20 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers or 32 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. And here, good steering, really precise, nice feeling in the steering. So it's really, you know, without any dead zone area here, really good. And I mean, it's not a small vehicle, but it still feels light. Low center of gravity due to the battery pack. Good concept, good building platform of this car. And the interior quality has been improved bit by bit here as well. And here, just a lot of fun. Suspension upgrade is really nice with an air suspension upgrade. Difference here to the Model 3, definitely. Here in the Model S, we do have the air suspension. That is definitely more comfortable. The suspension is, to me at the moment, the biggest weakness of the Model 3 also great vehicle and definitely better price performance i mean this one is way more expensive um, but here the air suspension does bring more comfort and it's a full-size sedan definitely but still does feel light and agile on the road because of the low center of gravity and the great steering and of course this you know very spontaneous driving feeling and you always know here with the electric vehicles when you stand at the traffic light it's no problem we you know not consuming any any energy and then um not very well like this these start stop functions of the cars and so on here you know, accelerating out of the corner even just in the chill mode so great agile what you know just so much fun driving this one what a unique driving experience once again yeah really really awesome so and now one more acceleration where we are already at speed and i just put in the standard acceleration mode again that we can show that properly so when I start at about 85 kilometers, let's go. That's again 180 kilometers now, wow. And I mean, this beeping sound, by the way, was again a warning because I was still in the autopilot and then starting the acceleration. So you could also turn it off before. And here, once again, so you know, the improvement of the noise sensation is great, you know, and there are still more silent cars, yes, but here at 170 kilometers an hour, stable on the road, uh, with this weight it has, also when I do a lane change at higher speeds, it's really precise. Um, you have to, you know, pay attention to don't over erect because the steering is very, very direct, so pay attention to that. And when we then go to a more normal motorway speed, here like 140, 130 kilometers an hour, or like, like 90 miles or something that's a really really calming down good noise insulation and most people worldwide won't have these german motorway speeds and then it's really really silent so once again this update for the vehicle so great to have that um, so when i really think about when i drove this vehicle for the first time i was so impressed with the car back then like 2012 i think it was 
that so much has been done meanwhile that it's really although it's basically the same car and still so you know impressive as the vehicle as is even more refined right now bit by bit they improved it and that's really really cool to see to see the development of this vehicle so and meanwhile we really have to say that the advantages the german premium manufacturers have that they more and more diminish so that's a tough thing to swallow for the german automotive industry but once again yeah great acceleration noise insulation is now good the air suspension upgrades is that you really feel more comfort at the same time it's not too soft so you can have good lane changes also at higher speeds that's well done and also easier to control this car here now that's a good thing you know we compare it to the model 3 i like to be able to change the temperature just here with the right thumb and the steering wheel at the middle model 3 it's probably that you would even more use the um, you know the voice control that would be a thing but also the voice control they can improve it bit by bit by the software have another over the air update and then you find just once again that's also one thing again so just you know before i did this review some things were updated and you always think like, oh that's exciting so what's new today you know so that's coming bit by bit once again what do you guys think here about our performance driving with the model s even not performance model but this one already with a lot of performance And now the conclusion of the Tesla Model S in the current status here with the recent Raven upgrade long range plus model. I think this is also the Model S to go for. It already has more than enough performance. The performance model, I mean with the bigger wheels and even more performance, it will be less comfortable so to speak. But in any case with the Raven upgrade, with the suspension upgrades and also the better noise insulation, it's way more comfortable than before. You can easily also drive it with higher speeds at Autobahn and so on on the motorway. So this, you know, evens out this distance it had in some areas to the German premium manufacturers. Still a very likable timeless styling for sure and yeah just the highest range we have at the moment on the market and of course when you drive higher speed motorway it will go down but still you can if you like reach the 400 miles or 650 kilometers of, uh, of this range but then again, if you drive more motorway, as I said earlier, more towards 300 miles and about 500 kilometers, but that's still a lot, definitely. To me, most important upgrade indeed, the noise installation, that's really cool. And also the interior has become even more refined. Very well usable, a lot of space on the interior and just a unique driving concept and also the unique interior concept. So I think at this size here in the full size sedan market still one of the best choices there is and of course also their very consistent strategy not to use animal skin on the seats beginning from 2017 in summer 2017 they changed it all and the model y and the model 3 they are both completely animal free here with the s and the x still have the issue with the steering wheel because there's also the heated steering wheel offering but that has also been worked on. So the manufacturer that is most consistent in the sustainability approach. And the next step, of course, would be to reduce even some critical materials for the battery use. But I mean, they already have cut the lithium use in half for the battery cells. So also progress in this respect. So once again, although it's not the newest car, it still somehow feels new especially with the most recent upgrade. And, you know, there's also the performance model. We have a review of that too. Even more speed, even better acceleration, really impressive. And there will be the plat model, which is going absolutely crazy for the acceleration. It will have a second rear electric motor, then overall three motors. And when this is out, of course, we will serve you with a full review. See you there.